Hi there you guys, Jacqueline Jacks here. Thanks for visiting my channel and if you like Schminke then so do I. I'm so excited because for my birthday month I'm going to be reviewing all of the new watercolors that I just recently got on sale at Jackson's. So thanks for Jackson's for making these available because this is incredible. I've not only been able to review so far the 48 wooden box set by Schminke that I adore, I just adore. But I also picked up these two on the sale and a bunch of travel brushes that I'll be reviewing for you guys. So I literally have, I think, all of the really cool limited edition sets coming in, as well as some other watercolor sets that I think you're really going to love. So if you're entering into the world of watercolor and you really want to explore what's out there, then definitely subscribe to my channel. On the other video, I reviewed the Seascape set. I adore this set. I even told you what additional paints I would put in the set to make it even more flexible and make it like your everyday palette as well. So definitely go check out that. Check out the 48 box set review because that is amazing. Swatching those out was so, so cool. And on this video, we're going to swatch out and review the botanical set, which I am terribly excited for because I love to paint flowers as well. So. These sets just cover everything. I mean, now I need to come up with my own urban palette because I'm going to be painting a lot of urban scenes this year too. And I don't have a palette for that. I mean, I basically have to come up with a palette for everything, don't I? <laughs> so let's go through these and also test out these brushes a little further as I did in the uh, Seascape edition. I probably will whip out probably, let's do this. Let's compare these to the Neptune Princeton brushes because I feel like the Ultimo is very, very similar to those brushes. And we can actually just kind of see why I might like these better. I don't know. We'll find out. All right, let's get these unboxed and unwrapped and ooh, let's dig in, shall we? So when you first receive this set, I think you'll notice right off the bat that um, it's a much different tin than the traditional tins. So traditionally, Schminka always sent things in these really beautiful black tins with the gold label. And I love them. I really do. This one, as I showed you in the last video, I repurposed it and made it um, a sketching kit. So you can do that with these tins. But the long ones do tend to be a little clumsy and a little bit um, cumbersome for me, especially if I'm going to travel around or if I just want to like kind of go anywhere and paint. And that's what, that's where this comes in. This square tin that they just recently came out with is insane. I love it. I'm so in love with it. I love everything about it. The color, the way it feels, the lightness of it, and even how sturdy it feels. So well done Schminke on this and that's why I got the botanical set and the seascape set and I additionally bought an extra of each one of these to keep as Christmas gifts or to offer to my students on my website at JacquelineJacks.com. So if you miss out on this set, which is still available by the way, then go over to my website and see if I have any limited edition sets left over because I typically will sell whatever I'm not using or that I haven't given away in our giveaways that we do over on our group page on Facebook. That is linked below too. I highly recommend you go join the group page. So in any case, this botanical set is looking really cool to me. It's looking like something that I could easily customize for pretty much anything I paint. I dare say if I fill in these little spots, I think I could make this into an urban set as well, just because I like to add a lot of color to my urban paintings. So if you are more monochromatic in your urban paintings and a lot of neutrals, then no, this wouldn't work for urban. This is definitely botanical, but oh my gosh, if you're a flower painter like I am, you're going to love this set. It's crazy good. And the best is you get this amazing tin that pretty much you can use in the studio or just take it everywhere, pop it in your bag because it's not that heavy. You could remove this and you could fit every single color you could possibly want in this tin. I mean, I could easily fit, oh my gosh, I would say four, eight, 12, maybe, yeah, maybe 24 colors in here. Definitely in the half pans, I could fit a ton. But for that being said, I kind of really am in love with this right now until I get really 
just to the point where I want to add more colors. I think having a limited palette, there's something to be said for that. I think it's really fun to have a limited palette because it keeps you kind of quick on your feet. It also doesn't confuse you and you get to mix things together that are meant to mix together. I think that Schminky does a really good job at curating these palettes and these especially on these limited edition sets so that they are meant to work together in the nicest way and usually there is a cool range and a warm range in each of these sets so as long as you kind of keep you know your cools and your warms apart you're not going to really get anything muddy and primarily most of the things that they offer are one color pigments like very very rarely do I ever see something um, like from their yellows that would be a ton of pigments like their lemon is PY3 in other words so it's not made up of a bunch of different colors that you don't realize don't mix together well you know so I think that this is a really good set to get if you're just getting one set and just getting started as a beginner because it really will cover everything from using the blues to do more seascapes to having the availability of the colors in order to generate some really beautiful flowers and not have to mix the colors yourself. But with that being said, I noticed that Carmine is in here, which mixes great with both the yellow, the Turner yellow or the Jean yellow and the lemon. That mix is great to make oranges. So you can make a range. The Quin Gold is about the nicest color that you could possibly want in any set. So having this available to you in this set, it's just a warm, gorgeous color that you could use and use and use. So that's definitely a plus getting that in here. And I also noticed that it comes with Transparent Green Gold. That is a very cool color. We're gonna swatch that out just in a second. Another good one that I think you will really enjoy is the May Green. May Green is the beautiful bright, bright green. When mixed with a little more blues, you can actually develop even everything from these cobalt green darks to like lighter ranges. And by adding yellow to it, you're just even gonna get all those shades up too. Really, really pretty, right? So, and then you've got some convenient browns like the sepia brown, which is a nice tone I do like the CPF by um, Schmienke. I think it's gonna be really convenient to have that one. Burnt Umber is of course the most convenient one to have. They put in Burnt Sienna and Burnt Sienna is really, really convenient because it's got a lot of red in it. So if you mix this with blue, it's gonna give you even more of a neutral. Um, but with that being said, if you notice, they put this Bark color Sepia Brown because it really does conveniently not make you mix your own brown. And I think for beginners, that's really important because it's really hard to get the right browns. You kind of end up at browns by accident, <laughs> if you know what I mean. But having it already in this set, that is a plus. So this also comes with a card. And it's funny how they describe how to swatch these, like put it in the upper part, wet your brush, and then draw it down. And that, that is a good way to swatch, but I typically don't use these cards because the paper is so thin. I actually like to make my own cards. So what I've done is for the, uh, for the actual kit, I'm going to put some metal um, stickers on the back so that it just sticks right in there because I probably won't use that as a mixing. I'll probably use this as a mixing area or, you know, just my palette, depending on where I am. Um, I usually don't mix in here, but you could mix if you wanted to. You could just get like a lot of times your brushes will come with clear plastic or if you're at the at the grocery store and you buy anything pre-made, it comes in a like a clear plastic. I repurpose those to not only keep my extra colors in, but I also cut them and use them as liners over the swatch kit so that this doesn't get wet and I can actually mix colors right on them if you if you like really lock it down so you could do that you can also take this out and use this as a mixing tray and even insert things I mean if you really want to go crazy you can insert all kinds of like empty pans or little long plastic wells all kinds of stuff you could do here you could even put a mixing area right here if you wanted to find something at the dollar store that's just you know long and and thin you could put it right in there or like i said add some empty um add some empty pans into this area and now you have 
additional mixing areas or if you want to do custom colors and you don't want to lose them or have to wipe them clean you could put them in there and then you could have your custom mixes like lavenders and stuff in there other than that at the end of this video i'm going to show you any colors that i feel that we could use this area to house to get additional really beautiful uh, use out of this palette so let me go ahead and unwrap these and i will be right back and we'll start painting Okay, so um, I always save these because later I usually take the little wrapper off and I add those to a piece of paper and keep a file on what's in each one of these original limited edition sets. And I find that it's really, really nice to have that information later. So this is typically what that will look like, where I've just kind of used some glue and taped it all down. And then I have all of the pigment information, the light fast, you know, everything I need to know on these sheets. And I do these sheets like extensively, like I'll do this and then I'll do like a painting sheet. And then I'll do like a really full, full color sheet where it's just got like transparency and how deep I can get the color and I'll do that for every single set even if it has um, duplicates in it so I recommend you do it because it really does help you get heavily involved in your paint so here's our beautiful set ready to swatch it is just gorgeous I love the colors already I think I can see a really great pattern here as far as range and giving you everything you need to paint trees florals you know just pretty much anything botanical it's beautiful really really nice i already kind of have my eye on a few things that we could add to this palette as far as brushes since i just got these new brushes in um, i tested the size 10 out already over on the seascape review of the other palette let's do a six compared to like this is the six ultimo compared to the six round neptune princeton neptune Compared to the Escoda 8 is the closest I have um, Prado because this will give us a nice range of like different brushes that are kind of similar that a lot of you are wondering about. And, you know, why not? <laughs> I always say, why not? What else are we doing? <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and add a little drop of clean water to each one of these. As I saw in the other Seascape limited edition set and also with the 48 wooden set that i just reviewed these things they schminke re-wets beautifully and then it dries and you can literally take it with you it's not like these sets i mean i've wet and let them sit in their cases i they never leak <laughs> i never have any issues with them they're not melting they're not spilling out they're really just a nice mix of beautiful brilliant colors with just enough to keep them in their pans. You know what I mean? And even even so, all of these in this lower palette here that I have in my studio palette, they're a mix of White Knights and Sennelier, Schminke, uh, Mission Gold, Daniel Smith. And I don't really have any issues with any of them. I can't, if, if it were really, really humid where I was, that is what might pose a problem with some of them. Probably possibly Sennelier but not really none of these are really tacky you know what I mean what's this one the Sennelier Thalo green that one has a lot of a lot of tackiness to it so that one is like more pliable the and some of the Daniel Smith ones are a couple of the Mission Gold are a little bit more but for the most part everything just dried fine and it's really not giving me a hard time at all you know, some of the Daniel Smith, like the Daniel Smith or the White Knights Carmine and the Daniel Smith Quinn Rose, those ones stay a little bit. They don't dry out as quickly. All right, we're not going to go through all these. <laughs> it's easy to do it. All right. So in any case, Schminke is, travels really, really well. So with all your brushes for good brush care, you want to get a brush soap and you don't want to leave your brushes in water. Always get the water out and store them on their side or like this so that you don't get the water just hanging out in the barrel of the brush too long. That's what really does 
make your brushes not last as long, but your brushes shouldn't really lose hair. I've never had one of these brushes lose hair right when I started with them. If your brushes are losing hair, then they, something's wrong, it's defective, or it's just not made very well, you know? So be careful with that. And what I'm expecting out of these brushes is for this one to have more concentrated color and these ones maybe to have more explosive color. But you know, with that being said, they're so small, they're going to be detailed. So I think I'm going to have to do this one because in order to get strokes here, we're going to need the bigger ones because the sheet is big, you know, but to swatch, we could easily use these and I'll show you how because they're size six. So they are a little, little, little small. Let's start with the Ultimo size six. You'll see what I'm saying. So we're going to go into the yellow. This is the lemon yellow number 215. Nice, beautiful transparency, which I fully expected because I'm used to painting with this one. I love this color. I use it so much. We're going to go ahead and take the Ultimo size 10. Holds a lot of water. Dip it into the color. And we're going to start here and here to use it for mixing. And then here, I'm actually going to do kind of a nice little painting of some flowers. Now, if you notice this Ultimo brush, I mean, what else do you need? It's, it's giving me enough water that I keep dipping it into the paint. I get full concentration of paint and I still don't have to redip my water. That's pretty interesting. You know what I mean? So look at that. I dipped it one time in water and I got all of that out of that Ultimo size 10. That's brilliant to me. That's a really, really great brush that holds a lot of water. Okay, so uh, next we're going to use the Prado size 8 by Escoda. And that actually held a lot of water because it's literally filling the pan up. So Turner Yellow, it's got an opaqueness to it. It's so funny, I almost feel like this is a different yellow than I'm used to because I'm used to uh, Turner Yellow being more like the Jean Yellow from Sennelier, but it's not, it's, it's completely different. Like it even says it on the thing. However, if you do water it down, you'll get some interesting, interesting effects. Let's see. So I'm just gonna give myself some centers here. Just some nice little loose centers. I'm gonna actually let some mix in with the yellows. Different strengths. Okay. Um, I'm trying to get you some lighter shades of this so that you can see that this is more than just a very opaque color that it actually reduces down to a pretty nice warm yellow and that's what it's doing in the set so this surprisingly this prado holds a lot of water um and i've never really done this comparison before so let's use the size six princeton round typically the princeton's hold a lot of water if i had a size 10 on my desk i would use it but it would literally just explode the water across the page you know so it delivers so much water it's almost too much you can see this is a six and look at how lusciously wet this is and how easy uh, this i have to say you know what the princeton neptune is easier to paint with than the escoda prado and i love the escoda prado but the princeton neptune is far easier to paint with Interesting. 
let's put this color here and look I'm still not wetting this tiny little brush and it's still delivering full color that's insane right okay so I'm just gonna give a little bit of shot of orange in here and let's pull off some petals in different that one tiny little brush gave me that entire thing that's insane look at that I mean I couldn't have asked for better performance on that one you know really like I'm even able to use the point. I'm going to try and do this with the Prado and see what happens. So now that I'm doing this, I'm, I'm completely, I'm kind of blown away here. And it removes color. That's right, it does. It does remove color really well. So I can even add a little color. needs to be re-wet though well that's just because it's so small but once it's wet it actually has too much that's interesting yeah for such a little brush this is crazy just doing something really quick with flowers it's going to look really neat because I have it all And I want to see how these colors all just kind of melt together. Okay, um, so on this, I'm just going to go back, add a little bit splotch of color. There we go. Interesting. All right, let's go back to the Prado and do the next color. So this is Carmine. Boy, these couldn't have re-wet any better. And this is typical of schminke or schminky or schminka whatever it is that you have resolved to calling them carmine's one of my favorite like pinky shades it's just so beautiful so um the prado holds a lot of water mixed with our lemon it gives us some really really pretty shades you can see how it's re-wetting and activating as i scrub a little bit let's get a little more of the yellow and i'm totally messing up my yellows but that's okay so as i scrub i get kind of like a burnty orange out of the carmine which is a neat color you know it's like a goldy orange let's clean this up I want my dirty colors here. Got to keep the yellows clean. Boy, that's really pretty. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take some of this and oh yeah, this is why I like the Prado. Okay, so what you're noticing here is when you lay the Prado down it really does a perfect petal shape. You know, like it has the kind of control that I didn't notice that I got from the Neptune. And why, I don't know. It's just the way the brush is made and the bristles. And, you know, for sake of argument, they I have heard that, you know, Princeton, it, although is a, excellent brush line and I love them to death and I have such a huge range of their uh, brushes I have like every single Neptune um, and I love them but compared to Escoda Escoda has a little longer I think tradition in brush making and 
I wouldn't say they, they just, they approach it differently. So I find that I'm never, ever disappointed with the Escoda brushes, you know? And as you can see, it's just lovely to paint with. I don't know if it's easier or harder. I feel like sometimes it fights me a little bit, but no, not, not at all right now. I just have to kind of um, go through it a little more extensively just to see how exactly I do feel about it. You know what I mean? Because I've never really thought of it that way. I just use it and I love it. And um, I've never really compared the two. Just something I grab for. I think since I got the Escoda brushes, I have been grabbing for this so much more. Look at how nice these colors just blend and work together. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm creating this neat little like kind of abstract mix of the colors so that you guys can see a nice variation of how these colors play together in more abstract flower works. This is going to look really cool once it, once we take it as it dries. Okay. Good. Um, okay, so right now, before, I thought maybe the other one was winning, but now, no. Now my Prado is winning the challenge. Uh, let's go back to the Ultimo, because we can't forget that one. And we'll do another color. The next color is Ultramarine Finest. Main difference between Ultramarine Finest and Ultramarine is the amount of granulation and the smoothness. This one is a very smooth Ultra, uh, so it's not a heavy granulating one, which makes sense for the botanical florals. You know, I don't really think that you necessarily need this to heavily granulate in this set. And you can always add a granulating color if you wanted something granulating in your floral set. You know, you can you can definitely live without it. I mean, there's enough. This is the texture on the paper um, that you're seeing, but there's enough going on with this color for you not to need granulation. Look at that beautiful green that it makes. It's almost like a cascade green if you're a Danielle Smith fan. Just by mixing the lemon with the ultra. Isn't that beautiful? Okay. I'm going to keep cleaning my yellows because I keep messing them up. So let's go ahead and take this. So this Ultimo, yep, I like it a lot. <laughs> so I'm going to create kind of a, a flower by just dragging this around and letting the brush kind of wear out of water a little bit so that I get different shades. And then I can go back in and add some strikes. I mean, this isn't going to be a masterpiece or anything. It's just something for fun to show you uh, what these colors can do. So I'm taking the Ultimo and I'm just doing a circle and pushing the color out towards the ends so that the center remains a little bit less colorful. And then I'm taking more color on the tip of my brush, which I don't, I'm not typically able to do that with my um, Neptunes as well, you know. And I'm going to push this color out again because it's really wet. And probably just take my finger and remove a little bit of color from the center. We'll go back to it. This 
is really pretty. So what are your favorite colors um, so far? And do you have any Schmincke watercolor yet? Or is this, you know, your kind of moment to see if you're going to go with Schmincke or Schmincke and order some new colors, perhaps, you know? That was fun. I actually really like to paint with this one. Let me go back to the Neptune. <laughs> They're so similar, you know, like, I mean, at the end of the day, you really can't go wrong with any of these brushes. They're class A brushes and they're beautiful. Prussian. Ooh, I love a good Prussian blue. So pretty. So Prussian blue mixed with any of these yellows um, or even the green made of the yellow is going to give you just such a beautiful teal. It's one of my favorite colors um, to make. And Prussian will definitely give you all those nice rich purples and rich teals, you know. So if I put a little Prussian there and I take a little Carmine and I mix them together, there's so much water on this brush. As small as it is, it literally can create a soppy mess and that makes it a little difficult, I think, for beginners. So you have to be careful, but this is for washes though. Remember the Neptune really is for washes. It's not like a, an everything brush. Although I tend to use them for everything because my hand is a little bit more um, trained. So I'm able to adjust, but look at that range. Isn't it pretty? Let's just go right along with it. And I'm going to take um, the Saturn red. go through. Let's mix some ultra finest over the Saturn red. See how it gives you that neutral color. So this is what I was saying is uh, they don't necessarily need to give you the browns because you can create your own neutrals from what's here easily. And you probably, you know, you, you definitely need to know how you arrive at these uh, neutral colors, these browns, because if you don't, you'll end up there and you won't know how you got there. And that might not be what you were going for. You know, it's really pretty. I love this range is pretty. And these are really nice, warm brown tones. Okay, let's go to the next color, May Green. I love this color. This is one of my favorites by Schminky. It's got a nice capacity to it if you get a lot on the brush. Yeah, you know, as much as I have always thought that Princeton brushes were a terrific idea for people who wanted to um, get started, now that Escoda has these price ranges down, I would recommend the Escoda line, I think. Yep, I would. Because I feel like this is a great brush. I love the Neptunes. But I feel like they're not the easiest. You know, I, th I think Escoda's really got some beautiful brushes. And those travel brushes are amazing. I'm, I'm enjoying them really a lot, you know. So I'm just kind of rolling, rolling shades of this light green around my... Um, around my little edges here because I really love this green. It's beautiful. And we can always go over uh, with see it does this nice rolled edge really well. Let's see if the other ones do it too. Okay, back to the Ultimo size 6. This is actually fun painting with the different the different brushes. <laughs> yep, the Ultimo does too. And you know what? The Ultimo does it better. Yep. And the Ultimo has a finer point. So compared to the Neptune, I'm really noticing right now that I would choose the Ultimo over the Neptune because the point is finer. The brush feels a little, um, feels a little more snappier. 
it doesn't hold as much water and color as the Neptune, but like how long do you need it to go? Because this is, I think this is pretty good. I think this is lasting a very, very long time. Like I just continued to pick up more color and the brush is pretty much out of water, but it's still giving me nice delivery, you know? So for dry brushing, it's still working. It's still working really hard for me. Look at that. Oh yeah, it's working really hard for me. This is really nice. So put plenty of green in there. Yeah, it's giving me a lot of really nice dry brushing. Okay, Ultima's winning out. Let's go back to the Prado. Next one is green olive. Once again, all these colors, they rewet beautifully. Some of them are a lot more pigmented than others, which is typical. This is a very pigmented shade and it is stunning. It's so, so pretty. So I would say, you know, this would make an excellent leaf. And look at how nice the Prado performs on this leaf. And it's got enough of a point for me to do something with, you know? That's really nice. So I'm going to re-wet it because it did wear out of water very quickly. And I'm just going to roll over some of the areas here that we want some of the different greens to mix in. It mixed in with the May green really well. So I would say the Prado doesn't keep as much moisture in the brush as the Ultimo, which of course makes sense because the Ultimo is, I believe, um, supposed to be synthetic squirrel. You know, so vegan. No animals were harmed in making that brush. I really like the Ultimo Travel brush though. I like the weight of it. Um, I would just use that brush all the time. So I think for my beginners, I would recommend that you get that travel brush, the Ultimo, especially while it's on sale. So the Prado is nice. It does hold its shape really well. It's easy to paint with, but not as easy as the Ultimo. For me, I like the Ultimo a lot more. Okay, let's do the next color. This is Transparent Green Gold. Haven't used this color in a long time, but it is a fun color to use. It does a lot of interesting mixes and things on paper. So I'm going to lighten it up a little bit there and let's just use it as a center to some of our little, some of our little flowers. I mean, this color is a good color to add a little bit of, you know, like if you're a Daniel Smith um, person and you like the qualities of um, like to paint autumn scenes. If you like the nickel azo yellow, then you could easily use green gold. Um, here, let me show you. Mixed with, from this kit, lemon or a cadmium. And now you have that warmer kind of look of the nickel azo where it has like, it has the, the really brightness of the yellow underneath the dirtiness of the other color, you know? So you could create kind of like a mix like that. And you can add a little bit of orange to it. It's a lot of orange, it holds so much water. And now you have a way of warming that up, that tone up. And that's really pretty too, you know? 
I'm just showing you like different different things you can do with this one set. It's amazing, right? There's a lot you can do with this one set. Next color, Quinn Gold, my favorite. Love this color. Oh my goodness. So Daniel Smith has a color um, called Aussie Red uh, that of course appeals to me very much because it looks just like my Quinn Gold. So I do have that color and I use it a lot. I use it on sunsets and it's really, really fun to use. Um, it's a second strike to my Quinn Gold though. You know, I love the qualities of the Quinn Gold and how it's got this caramel kind of look to it. But then underneath it's got this beautiful surprise. So like if you just, you know, let the water flow next to it, you can see how it just brightly brings these gorgeous shades of yellow. And it just is so pretty. I mean, literally you can just splash it on your painting and it, it will really just make painting so warm and come to life. I'm just going to add a little bit of it here. Um, if you're doing sunflowers, then it really looks pretty. I'm just rolling it along the edge of some of my yellows. Just to make sure we get that beautiful warmth. And it gives us that, yeah, that just really pretty, pretty caramelly orange look. It's pretty. Did I say pretty? I think I did. Uh, this way. So the Ultima ran out of water, but look at what the Ultima was able to do. Now, when I refilled the water, it did create kind of a puddle. So you do have to be careful, especially if you're going to work with something larger than the six. But once you, if, you, if I were to dab that out, it would have been fine. Okay, so I'm going to rinse and go pick up some yellow and deliver a little more yellow into the centers. So pretty. Now let's give it a little lifting ability and see what it does. So I'm just kind of striking over the color, scrubbing a little bit, and it's lifting. It's doing a great job. So once that dries, just a little clear water, take some of the water off of the brush so it's not going to create a soppy mess. And look at that. It definitely lifted really well. And the color, this is a great experiment with this color. It's lifting really, really well. So if I want to lift, now this is a soft brush to lift with. You know, I probably wouldn't use a nice brush like this to lift with, but if I needed to lift and this was all I had on me, then I would just go gentle and lift with it. Yeah, it's lifting really nicely. So the colors in this palette lift nicely and this brush did a great job at lifting. I just would worry that I would wear out my tip, you know, so I would probably use something that wasn't um, as nice to lift. Okay, Burnt Sienna, a gorgeous red color to have in your palette and it reduces down to a really, really pretty light shade going to be great for so many things. Um, you can also use your burnt sienna to create a neutral if you like. That's pretty. So I'm kind of out of room, huh? On my, my thing here. So I'm just kind of creating some shadows just so that I have used every single color in this little thing down here. It's going to be really interesting to look at, you know. It looks nice next to the blue, next to the French altar, because it's kind of like a, it's almost like an Indian red. Okay. And last color, sepia brown. 
So I feel that sepia brown is better used diluted um, just because it can, it can be really heavy. You see what I mean? But diluted, it's great on tree barks, especially uh, winter scenes or forest scenes because you can literally, I have no more room. <laughs> you can dilute it um, like this. So see how it's diluted and then you can add a little more depth of color to your brush. And it's very, very natural, natural tone, you know? So it gives you like the variations. If you're going to, um, if you're going to paint something like that, see what I mean? And I think it's important to have um, a neutral when you're doing botanicals or forests. You know, some people, they use neutral shade for this, but I like this much better for it. Because just within the one color, you literally can get, you know, all these interesting trunk variations and shades. See what I mean? And then you can wash it out. So that's a good really really good color to have in your palette if you're going to be painting botanicals for sure all right I think we have done it all so looking back at these brushes overall I'm in love with the Escoda Ultimo I love both of these the 10 and the 6 I've used them all day and I can't imagine re reaching for anything else I used to reach for my Prado and I love the Prado that would be my second choice um, and now my Neptunes somehow are moving into my third choice position, probably because the points are not as well done. You can tell by the way the brushes are. The points are good, but they're not nearly as well shaped as even the points on the Ultimo are well shaped for, for a wash brush, you know, for something I would consider in a wash category. This I feel like with the right hand and the right artist could be an all time brush for everything pretty much. And then maybe get, um, I would add a, a striper or, uh, I don't know if you call this a striper, or if you would call this a liner, it just depends on the company, but this is the Escoda Prado size two. I use this a lot and love it for, um, you know, for leaves and for branches. That would be just an excellent add to that set. You could also get the Versatile, makes a really good one. Uh, so it depends on what you have, but if I were just gonna choose three brushes, I could pretty much paint anything with just these three. Would just, yeah, this would be great for the wash. This would be great for a little more detail and just kind of general painting. And then this would take care of all of those, you know, like the fine line details. And that's all I would really need. Yeah, so, so far, and I have a lot of brushes coming in. We're going to re review the Versatile. We're going to review, um, well, we've done the Prado, but in more depth, all of the elite lines, you know, like there's Italian brushes coming in. So be sure if you really want to in-depth kind of like look, I'm going to be doing it as we go through swatching colors and then doing brush reviews and all kinds of stuff to find the perfect brushes. But right now I feel like this is my winner as far as if I could only choose three brushes and I would take these with me, this is what I would choose. Not saying a lot. I need in this set though, I do need a flat. Can I just mention that? And if I were going to choose a flat, oof, what would I choose? Gosh, it would be a cross between my Neptune three quarter inch flat. Yeah, this is, this is a tough one. And I don't know the Princeton Aqua Elite flat's good because it lifts, but you know what? The Escoda flat is really nice. 
I don't know that I would need a flat wash brush, so the Neptune doesn't really seem that necessary. I might go with the Escoda flat. That's really nice. All right, let's take this off and hopefully it's dry enough so that I don't rip the paper and destroy it. And we'll see what it looks like. So overall, the botanical set is a total win. I love it. I would take this as my travel palette. Uh, what other colors would I add to it? I would add cobalt to it, which would be this one, because I can't not have my cobalt turquoise. I love that color. Um, I would also add phthalo green or phthalo turquoise. So depending on what you like, uh, phthalo turquoise is a beautiful shade. Here, let me show you. So I would either add phthalo green, which we don't have, which is this beautiful blue green shade we don't have, or I definitely would add this one. Um, you could either add helio turquoise to this because we don't have this bright turquoise. Yeah, I like that. And I might add the scarlet red because it's decent light fast and it's a really nice shade to have in here that we don't have because we have a carmine but we don't have like a red like a warm red and if I were going to add a purple I would add the ultramarine violet because I really love that color it's just easy to paint with and it really truly is beautiful but we could mix this color from the French ultra easily so probably if I wanted to kind of really scale it back a lot of you would probably add perlene green because you like to um, use that in the backgrounds, but olive will real completely do. I think the phthalo green, because you can't really get a phthalo green and the cobalt green. Um, Prussian green, we don't really need. I would say helio turquoise. Yeah, so helio turquoise, cobalt blue, and phthalo green, and scarlet red. Those would be my choices to add colors to this palette because other than that do I need a cad yellow I mean not really the lemon is is just fine and you have enough oranges in here to warm up your your yellow if you want to you could do I mean you could do like small pans if you you have six if you do little um, half pans you would have six shades you could have so you could put a cad yellow in there for the warm yellow as the opposer to your because the Turner's yellow is good but honestly the Turner's yellow doesn't really speak to me as much as a cad yellow would but that's just me I, tell me if you feel the same if the Turner's yellow really is the best choice for this palette I feel like maybe they're just it's predictable you know to put um, cad yellow in when you have lemon yellow because that's the counterpart that's the warmer one but maybe they were trying for something different. And if you look at the painting, it does use a lot of the Turner yellow to get the warmth, right? But it's, it's a little opaque for me. That's just for me personally, for the way I paint. I feel like I would rather have a more transparent warm yellow that I can mix uh, rather than something that has a little white in it. And I feel like this Turner yellow might have a little bit of white in it. We'd have to look at the content and see if it does. Um, let me see. So, Turner Yellow. So it says 219. It's PY216. So, PY216. So, go look it up and let me know <laughs> what it says about PY216, will you? <laughs> I still think. Don't you think cadmium yellow light would be a better placement for this set if you were going to change anything? I mean, what do you guys think? What do you think we should change? Because we can switch out these palettes and make them custom any way we want, right? So if you were going, if you're going to buy this palette, of course, the colors in it are amazing. And if you, if you divide the cost of the palette being under $100, in some cases $50 to 60 to 70, depending on where you, where you are and where you're buying it, and you divide that by the amount of paint that you get, it's kind of like when I bought this wooden set, it mapped out to less than $11 per full pan. 
So that, including the box, including two brushes and including the ceramic palette is such a great deal to buy big, right? That, I mean, how could you not? $11 for a full pan. That's a really, really good deal to get this incredible set. But like on these with the half pans, you're getting a really, really nice box, limited edition. What colors in here do you feel that you could have lived without, if any, or do you love it the way it is? And would you have, what else would you add to this if you had it? Either way, I love this palette. I'm so thrilled with it and I'm going to paint with it all the time. And literally every day I'm either going to reach, if I go sit somewhere and paint, cause I can't bring the big box with me. I'm either going to reach for this one or reach for the C one of which I've added my own like additional colors. So it just builds the range more because I love to paint with blues, but yeah, you definitely need them both because you can see where both are so unique. All right. So there's my little fun uh, floral that I did actually it turned out good. I like it. It's kind of fun looking with the, with the lines through it. I like it. And there's all of our colors. I hope you guys enjoyed this and got a lot out of it. I think we talked in great deal about brushes which um, is going to help out all the people in my group a lot because you guys are trying to decide what brushes to get before the sale's over. So I definitely am down to these. I love these. And let me get the, um, let me show you this, the flat that I like. And again, guys, this is just the way I paint, right? So the way you paint is probably going to be much different. And yes, I have a ton of brushes. The flat that I like um, that I would add is this one. It's a three quarter inch Escoda Prado. So we have the Ultimo size six in the travel brush, the Ultimo size 10, cause that pretty, co it covers everything, right? You don't really need the eight. And the Escoda Prado size two in the liner or striper. I think there's another name for it too. Escoda three quarter inch Prado in the flat. And that would be like the perfect brush set that would really take me through everything. In fact, I think I'm just gonna keep this right here with my goodies. And that's just what I'm gonna use all the time <laughs> because I can't really see me reaching for anything else now that I have these two. And they just arrived today, my poor other brushes. It just goes to show you, like you wanna add brushes very carefully and slowly because you can end up with a ton of brushes. Not that I haven't used them. I have literally used every single brush so much and enjoyed everything about it. And I will continue to do that because I do a lot of painting. All right, guys. So if you want to take lessons from me, I actually have a free forever on my JacquelineJacks.com. Then there is um, links to the Skillshare lessons if you're on Skillshare or if you want to just take some really, really great classes directly from me. I have a lot of sets that are available and offered, whether it be florals or urbans or learning to, to paint um, seascapes and abstracts, I do a lot of good things. So certainly come over to JacquelineJacks.com when you get a chance or you need some help and join my group page on Facebook because that's a great way to get a lot of free help from me and all the members in the group. Have a great one and I hope to see you enjoying the new special edition botanical set from Schminke. I love it.